Have you ever felt completely frazzled, like everything around you is a complete storm raging? Well, you know, we can have peace in the middle of every storm. Hang on and listen and find out how. Why live a normal life when you could be living the abundant life? Welcome to the Abundant Life Program with Ashley and Carly Terradez. Hello and welcome to Abundant Life. So glad you've joined us today in the lounge. My name is Ashley Terradez and this is my wife Carly. And we're so excited today because we've got a great program. We're talking about how to see the power of God, God's promises manifest in your life. You know, once you believe the Word of God, once you believe the promises of God, you know, we want you to see them manifest in your everyday life. We want you to see those promises come to pass in your life, praise God. And we want you to experience everything God has paid for, for you to experience. Amen. So that's what we're talking about mm -hmm. during this series. We're in the middle yeah. of a series here talking about this and about how it, it starts with uh, confession mm -hmm. and then creation and then manifestation. Right. So explain to us, Carly, where we're up to, what we've covered maybe before, and, and, uh, and what we're going to look at today. Right. Well, we've been through a whole host of different things. We've been talking about the power of our words and the importance of confession and sowing um, seeds of the Word of God through faith. And then what happens in the meantime, once we've sown those words, there is a creation phase where those words go to work and they start to bear fruit. And when they start to bear fruit, that's what we see there as manifestation. Mm -hmm. And we've talked a lot about um, the patience about sometimes there is there is a point or sometimes for some people it's quite a long time actually between when the word of God is spoken forth and when they see the manifestation the fruit of that the evidence of that in their life and God is not the one determining that he is not up in heaven just deciding that some people are going to take a year to receive their healing and some people are going to get their healing instantaneously we've talked about the reasons why sometimes things take longer and, and the condition of our heart and how that um, influences that process. But what we want to talk about this time is pe having peace in the process, how um, we can have peace in the middle of a storm. You know, sometimes we're in the middle of this process and especially, especially if it's been going on for a long time, mm. that we can grow real weary real quickly in, in the waiting, thinking, oh my goodness, when am I going to see the promises of God manifest in my life? And if we're not careful, we can become very quickly and easily weary and frustrated. Mm -hmm. And last time we talked about the rest, the rest that comes when we enter into the peace and the faith that God has for us. In faith, there is peace and there is rest. But it is a fight. It is a fight in our minds to enter into the rest and rest on everything that Jesus has already paid for for us. Amen. We talked that about battles in our minds. Amen. We talked about that being the good fight of faith. You know, it's a, it's a good fight to try and keep yourself in rest because our human nature and also sometimes our religious thinking will make us want to do stuff to receive from God. You know, maybe if I do this and do that, and basically that's the law. That's going back under good works, trying to make things happen. But the fact is, Jesus already paid the price 100% for you to receive from God. He's already mm -hmm. paid the price for your righteousness. He's already paid the price for your healing, for your prosperity and your peace. He did that on the cross. And now the only way for us to receive that is by faith in what Jesus has already done by believing in what's already happened, not trying to make it happen ourselves. So we have to keep ourselves in that position of rest because otherwise we'll run around trying to make it happen ourselves and just like Abraham, we'll end up with an Ishmael. Right, rather we'll than make a waiting. mess. We'll make a mess of it rather than waiting uh, to receive from God. And we also establish, as Carly said, it's not God holding out on us. God is always yes and amen to our, uh, to our mm -hmm. uh, request from him when it comes to his promises. His promises are set. He's made up his mind about you. He loves you. He's got good things for you, only good things for you. So, you know, you can, you can be assured that God mm -hmm. has good for you and you can be assured the promises of God are for you today. And He's not holding out on you. He wants to give to you. He's the biggest giver and He wants to give to you. So it's us who sometimes struggle with receiving and that's what mm -hmm. we're looking at. Sometimes it can take some time for us to receive. Mm -hmm. But we don't have to lose our peace in the middle of the process. Amen. You know, it was Jesus that got up and spoke peace to the storm. Mm -hmm. And this is really interesting. Let's take a minute and just look at this. This is in uh, Mark 4. Uh, this is the calming of the storm. And I know that, um, well, I can relate. I'm sure many of you can. You know, we've been through a few storms in our life. We've, you know, just a few, right? Yeah. <laughs> just a few where, it, where, where the storm around us is raging and we, we needed to understand what it meant to enter into some peace. So let's look at this. Um, this is Jesus in Mark, um, in Mark 4. 
verse 35, it says, The same day when the evening came, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. When they had set the, in, uh, the, sent the crowd away, they took him in the boat just as he was, and there were also other boats around. A great windstorm arose, and the waves splashed the boat so that it was now filling with water. He was, being Jesus, was asleep in the stern on a pillow. They woke him and said, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Man, I think that's a real common response in the middle of a storm sometimes when things seem really terrible. We say, God, are you in this? Are you are you listening to me? Do you even care? Right, we're in pain. Maybe we're right. in physical pain or emotional pain. It's like, mm -hmm. God, where are you? Can't you see the suffering we're going through? I think that's a common response. It is. That's how we can feel sometimes. It is. And, you know, the disciples here were just voicing what some of us have felt very strongly at times. Teacher, do you not care that we're perishing? But, but look at Jesus' response here. He says, he rose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? In some translations, it says, in some gospels, it says, where is your faith? In other words, who is your faith in? Mm, that's good. Do you not understand that your saviour is in the boat with you? Wow, that's good. You know, and it's a really interesting response because when Jesus got up, he said, peace, be still. He didn't say, you know, wind, you need to just settle down now. Stop mm. what you're doing. You know, I rebuke you. I mean, he, d he could have said a lot of different things. He said specifically, peace, be still. And if you study this out, this, this word peace here is the word in, in, in the Greek, it means Irene. One of the meanings of that is to set things right again, oh. to set things as they were supposed to be. That's good. It's talking about um, a rest, a, a peace, a stillness, to stop the noise. So the word of God was in verse 35, Jesus said, let us go over to the other side. So Jesus commanded the disciples, let's go over to the other side. That was the word of God in this situation. Mm -hmm. And then a storm came along, which was challenging that word of God. It's saying, you're not going to be able to go over to the other side. You're going to die right here in the middle of the lake. You're not going to make it That's to the other side. That's what the circumstances spoke to them very that's loudly. That's what it looked like. Yeah. That's what it looked like. And that's what will happen a lot of the times. We'll be believing God. We'll be believing the word of God for our healing or our provision or whatever you believe in the word of God for. And then a storm will come along. And it will say, basically, this storm will say, you can't have what you're believing. It's not going to work. It's not going to work You're for believing you. too big. That's what it It's not going to work. You're going to fail. It's, you know, it's not going to happen. And that's what storms have come. Storms have come, uh, come to make you, to steal the word, basically, to get you off the word of God, to stop you believing in God's promises. Yeah. That's what they're designed to do. But it's very interesting, isn't it? Peace, be still. That means to stop the noise, mm -hmm. to silence the sound. You know, and our circumstances, they speak to us. Mm -hmm. They say all of those things that Ash has just mentioned, it's not going to work for you. You can't do it. You can't get ahead. You're crazy believing that God's not going to do that for you. Healing's not really for today, right? You're, you're being irresponsible believing God. We've had those oh, ones yeah. before. Yeah. You know, the minute you start to step out in faith in anything and believe God for anything, there will be a noise of people around you that come up to tell you the reasons it won't work. Yeah. But he, just like what Jesus is, is saying here, we need to silence the storm. We need to silence the noise of, of everything else that's going around us and enter into the rest that only he has. You know, this, one of the reasons why the disciples were so um, disturbed by this storm was they had forgotten the very word that Jesus had spoken to them mm. to go to the other side when they first got in the boat. You see, God had never asked us to do something that we can't do. Amen. He'd never tell, he'd ne you know, he never sets us up for failure. Amen. He never sets us up. He never, he'd never put something on your heart to believe him for that he had no intention of providing. He's not an illegitimate father. He, he you know, he, he pays his child support, Amen. right? I mean, God pays his bills. Sometimes he's asked us to believe for things. He hasn't asked us to pay for things. Mm. And there's a difference. If we're not careful, we can really quickly move out away from, from peace and we we'll lose our peace, if you like, because we start taking responsibilities for things that God's asked us to believe him for, for to trust him for. He hasn't asked us to take responsibility to pay for them. That's quite different. That's good. You know, we, well, all, that, all that Jesus asked the disciples to do in this moment was to go to the other side. He didn't ask them to, to do anything else, but they forgot the word that he originally told them. And so they started looking around at the natural circumstances, the wind and the waves and how scary and terrifying it was. And there is Jesus. He gets up and says, where is your faith? Do you really think that this boat is going down with me in it? 
I mean, seriously, yeah. when we start to understand that we have Jesus on the inside of us, we're, we have an, un- an unsinkable ship. We're unsinkable. We're unsinkable. We have Jesus in us. You know, Jesus isn't going to sink. Amen. Man, we can, have, we can have peace and rest in that, knowing that we are a carrier of the King of glory. Amen. It's Amen. Awesome. It's awesome. We can do anything that God's called us to do. Amen. He is not going to set us up for failure. And, though, and so he says, the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And he said to them, why are you so fearful? You know, fear and peace are polar opposites. Mm-hmm. We cannot be in fear and be in peace at the same time. And, and peace and faith go together. Peace, faith, and patience, like a little club, right? (laughs) They all go together, but fear is out here on the outside. So how do we know if we're in peace or not? Well, if we are constantly worried about things, if we are constantly fretful about things, we're not in peace because we can't be in peace and in in faith at the same time. We can't be in peace and in fear at the same time. So how do we, in the middle of a storm, when all of the noises are raging, maybe symptoms are raging in your body, pain screaming really loud on the inside of you, the bank account has no money, you know, you're getting all the, the red letters through the, through the mail there demanding money, you don't have any money to pay the bills. How can you be in peace in the middle of a storm? That's good. Well, I've got Paul, Paul gives us some advice mm-hmm. here yeah, and, let's and hear talks it. to us about how to, how to uh, be in peace. So this is uh, Philippians. Philippians 4, 7, Philippians 4, 7 puts it this way. It says, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So there's a peace that God gives us, a supernatural peace that's beyond the circumstances. It's beyond our understanding and it will actually guard our hearts and minds. And it will actually stop us getting into turmoil. It will stop us getting into fear. Mm -hmm. And there is this peace, this supernatural peace. And it's beyond understanding. We've experienced it. We've had times in our life where we've had terrible circumstances. One of those was our daughter when she was just uh, a week away from death. And we found out the truth that it was God's will for her to be well. We started believing the truth. We started listening to teachings that showed us it was God's will for her to be well. It's God's will to heal her. But we didn't see her healed right away. We started listening to this teaching. It was, it was two weeks or so until we saw her healed. But during that two weeks, mm-hmm. we had peace. Our hearts and our minds were guarded and we had peace. We even had joy. People even criticized us afterwards. They said, well, you've only got peace and joy now because your daughter was healed. And we went back and said to the, uh, asked the people that were with us, hey, was we like this a week before she was healed? They said, yeah, even before you, their daughter was healed, they had peace because mm-hmm. we had that supernatural peace. We've had, we've had times where we're heading to court and don't know how it's going to turn out. And we've gone to court cases and had peace, supernatural peace. Mm-hmm. We've had terrible storms in our life and we've still had peace in the midst of the storm. And that's a supernatural peace that God gives us. But here's how it's activated. Paul shows us here how that peace is activated. So let's back up to Philippians 4.4. 4. So this is Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. And let's back up. And everyone's heard these verses, but it's interesting when you put them into context, how they actually work out. If you put these verses into context, you'll see how they work. So this is Philippians 4.4. 4. Paul says, rejoice in the Lord always. That means, rejoice means practice the, jo- the joy, if you like. Go back joy and rehearse again. it. Yeah. Joy again and again and again. Exactly. Rehearse the joy that you've experienced. So rejoice in the Lord always. He's saying rejoice. When? Sometimes? No, always. So even in the midst of a storm rejoice in the Lord we always have something to rejoice about you know Paul and Silas were in prison and they were tied to a wall in 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 a prison in in Acts and they rejoiced in the Lord they rejoiced in that situation sometimes we don't feel like rejoicing rejoicing is a decision it's not an emotion Right. Yeah. And, and to rejoice is, is not an emotion. We have to sometimes rejoice through gritted teeth. I tell right. people when you least feel like giving thanks to God is the most powerful time you can give thanks to him. When you mm-hmm. least feel like worshiping God is the most powerful time you can worship him. And I've done it before where it's been through gritted teeth. Everything around me looks like it's falling apart. Everything around me looks like it's not working. But I'll grit my teeth and I'll say, thank you, Jesus, and find something to rejoice about, right. even if it's just for your salvation, even if it's just for your, the, the, the air in your lungs, praise God. Find mm-hmm. something to thank God for and start rejoicing in the Lord. And that's, that's the first step. We need to rejoice in the Lord. Mm-hmm. And he'll show us here and he says, again, I say rejoice. So he said it twice. He was pretty serious, Paul, when he wrote this. Again, I say rejoice. First five, let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Verse six, listen to this. Be anxious for nothing. Paul's saying, be anxious for nothing. But by everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, again, with thanksgiving. So Paul's saying, don't be anxious, don't be worried. You know, Jesus talks about this in Matthew 6. He Mm -hmm. says, "Uh, who of you through worrying can add one cubic to your stature? How can you change the situation through worrying? 
Don't worry about anything. Jesus says, don't worry. Your father knows what you have need of. Don't worry. Don't let the cares of this world enter in. Take no thought for your life. Don't worry. And, and Jesus is saying, be anxious for nothing. You know, Peter puts it this way. Cast all your burdens onto the Lord. Cast in your cares onto God. So Paul's saying here, don't worry. Be anxious for nothing, but pray. Pray to God. Tell God your needs. Tell God what's on your heart with thanksgiving. So don't do it moaning. You know, mm-hmm. like, oh God, you know, and you start moaning. No, don't moan like that. It's Tell God what's going on. Tell God your, 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 your situations. But do it with thanksgiving. Thank him for the victory that you're going to experience afterwards. Let your requests be known to God. So it's almost like thanking God for making it happen before you've even seen it right. happen. Actually, we were talking about this in a, in a previous program when we, when we were talking about patience. Mm-hmm. How patience, the actual word for patience means endurance. And it's not just struggling through. Mm-hmm. It is a cheerful expectation of something good happening. Mm-hmm. It is a holding on, an endurance that is cheerful, that is, that is joyful. Man, that's exactly what we're talking about right here, that's isn't what about it? Here. It says, uh, by, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, mm-hmm. let your requests be known to God. So God's, Paul's saying here, let God know what's going on. He already knows, but when you air it to him, with thanksgiving, praise God, you're giving him permission to get involved. And then in verse seven, it says, and the peace of God. If you study this out, basically it's saying you do these things, that you're going to experience the peace the of God. The consequence is peace in your the life. The consequence of doing these things is the peace of God in your life. This yep. is how we, we, make the, we, we experience or we make the peace of God manifest in mm-hmm. our life. It's always there for us, but it's up to us. What are we thinking on? You know, there's so many verses about how we think, what we think on is so important. What we set our mind on is so important. If we set our mind on things that are going to cause us uh, uh, problems and worry and anxiety, that's the road we're going to go down. But if we choose to set our mind on things good, and that's exactly what the next verse says. And finally, whatever things are true, whatever things are are noble, uh, just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. And, the, and verse nine, the things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do also, and the God of peace will be with you. So yeah. right here in Philippians four, between four and verse eight, between verse eight and verse four of chapter four, Paul is showing us here how to live in peace, right. whatever the circumstance, right. whatever the circumstance, we can live in peace. And I like God. how he says, meditate. If anything is good, mm-hmm. if anything is noble, if anything is lovely, if anything is a good report and is praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Well. Meditation leads us into peace. Amen. But what is meditation? Is it like, mm, <laughs> right? Say <that> again. Mm, <laughs> right? It's none of those things. The word meditate, it means to speak it, study it, utter it, or roar it like a lion, is what it means. Speak it, study, utter, or roar it like Are a you lion. Do a roar for us? I'm not going to let it roar and I'm not going to sing Katy Perry. But okay. anyway, it's his favorite, I have to say. <laughs> um, it's very sad. But anyway. You know, we need to be speaking out the word of God. This is how we started this whole series. We confess the word of God, what the word of God says about our situation. We speak the word of God only into our situation. And that power that's in that word goes forth and it plants a seed. And that seed starts to create and it starts to bear fruit. And it's the same process with peace. This peace is part of a, is the result, is the end result of a process of thanksgiving and keeping our our mind stayed upon the Lord. Amen. This is, uh, uh, Paul puts it this way in, in, Philipp- in uh, Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians uh, 5, 1 Thessalonians 5, starting at verse 16, he puts it this way. He says, rejoice always. This is very similar to So rejoice, 4. joy again, yeah. joy very, again, very joy again. Very similar again. to Philippians 4. <laughs> yeah, rejoice always, pray without ceasing. So be praying, making your request known to mm-hmm. God. In everything, give thanks. Now, not for everything. We don't give God thanks for everything because not everything comes from God. Right. But we give God thanks in everything. So whatever we're going through, we can still give God thanks. And it says, in everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. This is God's will for us. God's will for us is that we're rejoicing, that we're praying without ceasing. That means keeping constant relationship with God and that we're giving thanks in everything. That's his will for us. And then it says, do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies. Test all things. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Now that may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. So he's saying you do these things, again, the God, you're going to experience yep. the God of peace. You're going to experience this supernatural peace that surpasses all understanding. It's not something we get by asking someone to lay hands on us, although that may help. Mm-hmm. It's not something we get by, you know, doing something. No, it's something we get by following these instructions, by training ourselves to think on the good, training ourselves to only meditate on the good report, only meditate on the word of God, only meditate on good things. Don't let your mind wander on the bad things. Don't let the enemy come in 
and give you these bad thoughts and give you these these things that are going to make you think on the on the wrong rapport. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to experience peace. That's true. And you know, I, I, I think the biggest battle is in our minds. Amen, it really is. It's not even the devil necessarily. Sure, he can tempt you to think and be distracted on, on thing, with things that aren't of God. But look, at this is in Colossians um, 3, 14 and 15. I like how it says it in the Amplified. It says, and above all these, put on love. Mm. Put on your relationship with God. Put, put, put Jesus first and enfold yourselves, almost like a cloak, enfold yourselves with the bond of perfectness, which binds everything together completely in ideal harmony. And let the peace, we have to allow the peace, yeah. which it describes as the soul harmony, which comes from Christ. Let the peace, which, which comes from Christ, rule or act as an umpire continually in our hearts. Now an umpire, my, my picture of an umpire is a, a cricket match in England. Okay. In England, the, the umpire, he's like the... Um, referee. He's like the referee, yeah. right? Yeah. And he, I don't know what he does, but he, he has all the rules and he collects all the sweaters at the end of the, of the actually, match. Actually, in, in I don't England, know how that yeah, works, the cricket matches, he stands it's a bit strange. there and he watches the wickets and actually the other cricketers, because they're in this big oval, they'll give him their sweaters. Why do they and wear thick woolly sweaters when they're America, playing cricket? I know in America, this is going to be hard for people to understand, yeah. but Google it, trust us, the English viewers will understand. The other players give the umpire, give the referee their sweaters to hold on to, and he'll <laughs> put them around his neck. And by the end of the game, He's true like story, huge. he'll end up with like 10 sweaters. And it's I never a understood that. Thing. It's some sort of cricket tradition. So when I think of umpire, that's what you think of. I always think of the cricket umpire he makes with the call. all of the sweaters. That has absolutely nothing to do with this, but it's a visual picture for he you. He makes the call, though. He right? makes the call. The umpire calls the shots. He says whether it's a foul or whether that play can stand. He decides whether LBW. something's allowed or not allowed. LBW, that means leg before wicket. LBW, Wonderful. that's cricket terms. Anyway, so we need to let, we need to allow the peace of the, which is from Christ become, uh, act as a rule, act as an umpire continually in our hearts. We need to let it call the shots. We need to let the peace of God call the shots over what we allow into our heart, what we allow to into our mind, what we are meditating on, what we are speaking, stuttering, studying, utter or roaring. We let the need to let the peace of God be the umpire in these things. It says, in your hearts, deciding and settling with finality all questions that arise in our minds. So we're going to let the word of God be the final authority over any questions that arise in our mind. And in that peaceful state to which as members of Christ's one body, you are also called to live. This was supposed to be a lifestyle, not just a crisis management right, right. system. Right, right. This is how to live every day. Right? This is the will of God for this us. This is the will of God. And be thankful appreciative, giving thanks to God always. So not only do we put on the, the peace of God like a cloak, we let it envelop us. We let it be the ruler of our heart and mind and the finality of any questions which rise up on the inside of us. So when you get the doctor's report that is negative, or when you look and all you see is lack, when you, when you come up against a giant in your land, mm -hmm. right, we can go back to the Word of God and we say, well, hang a second, this is what's going on in the natural. This is what it looks like in the circumstances. This is what the storm is shouting at me. Mm -hmm. What does the word of God say? What does the word of God say about this situation? Because I'm going to go with this report and not the report of the things that are around me. Amen. And when we do that, the peace of God, the, heart, the soul harmony that it's talking about here, harmony, peace, rest in our soul will, will, will spring up on the inside of us. And just like when Jesus said, peace be still to the storm, what happens is he silenced the storm. We will silence the voice of those noises around us. Amen. Those circumstances mm -hmm. will have to change. But those circumstances are subject to change by what comes out of us. You know, we don't have to let the circumstances around us determine whether in, we're in peace or not. It's the peace of God that's on the inside of us, which, which causes peace to happen in the circumstances around us. Amen. It's a decision, right? It's our choice. Yeah. We have to choose what we think on. We have to choose what we meditate on and what we think on. Mm -hmm. Just a few uh, verses up from that last scripture Carly read. This is Paul talking in Colossians uh, 3 and verse 2. He says, set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. Mm -hmm. And it's up to us to choose to set our mind on the kingdom things, set mm -hmm. our mind on the word of God, set our mind on the promises of God, set our mind on the truth, the truth, not on the circumstances, a truth, but set our minds on the things above. So the doctors might tell you, you've got this disease and this is going to happen to you. That's a truth. We don't deny that. That's a truth. That's the earthly truth. 
But the heavenly truth is, the kingdom truth, the word of God's truth is, the truth is that you are healed mm -hmm. by his stripes. You will live and not die. That's mm -hmm. the truth. And we have to decide to think on those things. We have to decide to set our mind on those things, set our minds on the truth rather than a truth. And that's when we start to see the peace of God come into our hearts, when we meditate Amen. on those things. And this is a battle. You know what? This, is a, this is, needs to be a habit in our life because if we wait until a storm arises, I don't know about you, but storms can be pretty loud. You know, here where we live, we get some pretty big storms in the right. summer and they're loud and they're noisy and they're intimidating and they can seem completely overwhelming, almost like you're totally out of control. You right. can't control the weather, right, if you get caught in one of those things. Well, the storms of life can be like that. And, you know, if we wait until we're in a storm when it's noisy and it's raging around us, it's hard for us to enter into the peace because we haven't, if we haven't first developed a habit of tuning into the peace of God, mm -hmm. if we haven't developed a habit of listening, speaking, studying, utter and roaring, right? This habit of entering into peace and rest, we need to prepare in times of peace for times of war. Yeah. Let's make this, this walking in peace become part of our daily habit, become part of our lifestyle. Let's be people of peace that live a lifestyle of peace. Amen. Amen. And ultimately, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Amen. So our relationship with Jesus is what it's all about. Spending time with Jesus, just like Kylie's saying, is where our peace comes from. When we do these things at His feet, we can experience that peace. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We're out of time, but we want to pray for you. Father God, I thank you for everyone watching and listening to this show today. I thank you, Lord, that you're giving them peace that surpasses understanding, peace that's beyond their circumstances. We speak peace to the storms. Amen, peace to your storms right now. And we're believing that your storms are gonna cease in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, praise God. We'll be back real soon. Until next time, remember, don't just live a normal life when you could be living the abundant life. We'll see you next time. To order your copy of this teaching, visit our website, teradesministries.com. Hey, thanks for being with us today. We were teaching on the peace of God, peace that surpasses all understanding. Do you know that peace is, is available to you? Whatever your circumstance you're going through, whatever it looks like on the outside, God has given you a peace on the inside that surpasses all understanding. You can experience that peace and we want you to experience that peace. Why don't you go ahead and get the full teaching? This was just one part of a whole series we've been teaching on how you can see the promises of God manifest in your life. So go ahead, see the instructions on the screen. Go ahead and get this teaching. It's going to encourage you. You're going to be able to see the promises of God manifest in your life on a day-to-day -day basis. We want to empower you in God's promises. So go ahead and order the teaching today. Download your free copy of Ashley and Carly's teaching notes at our website, teradesministries.com. Just like Jesus gave you healing, Jesus also gave you prosperity in your finances. So whatever your situation is, you can receive the prosperity of the Lord. Now, because Jesus came not just to give us life, but to give us life more abundantly. Amen. Their heart is for people, to set people free with this abundant life. Oh, Ashley and Carly, I think they're amazing. Um, you know, I think they have a great ministry. I think they're inspired. I think God's really working in their life. Through the many outreaches of Teradez Ministries, people are being saved, healed, baptized in the Holy Spirit, and are receiving financial miracles. Oh, it's wonderful. We're supporters. We started supporting them last year. And since we've done that, we have been so blessed. Our house is paid off. Our cars are paid off. We are debt free. Teradez Ministries is dedicated to empowering believers in the promises of God. Join Ashley and Carly in spreading the good news of abundance and freedom. Become a partner today.